So, I'm the uh, president of the National Union of Rail Maritime Transport Workers. My union has decided, our executive committee has voted after some discussion uh, to allow our branches to support uh, candidates standing for the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition uh, in these local elections in London and also throughout uh, England and Wales. And there are candidates standing in Cardiff and Swansea and Southampton in Liverpool uh, and a number of other uh, cities and towns as well. Uh, that's not to say, just to be clear, that we are prescribing that all of our branches must support those candidates. Far from it. Uh, within our rule book as a union, branches are allowed to support Labour Party candidates without seeking leave to do so from the Executive Committee. However, we've given them leave uh, to support socialist candidates standing on a platform that we believe is in line with our union's policies uh, where they choose to do so. And in this election, we've decided that the Trade Union Socialist Coalition fits those criteria and therefore we're encouraging branches who want to get actively involved in local campaigns uh, to get involved with Tusk, um, as it's become known. Now, in London, of course, there's a slightly different situation from anywhere else in the country. Because in London, because of the voting, situa because of the voting methods, we have a London-wide top-up list. And what Tusk is doing in London is it is standing candidates on the top-up voting list only. That is to say, we're not standing a candidate for mayor. Uh, the Ken and Boris show, or the Ken, Boris and Jenny show, uh, is, uh, is something that is of consuming interest in the Evening Standard, uh, and is important, uh, because the mayor does wield a lot of, uh, of, of power. Uh, but what we are seeking to do is to get a socialist and trade unionist candidate elected into the GLA. And the reason that we're trying to do that is because we believe not that that person would be able to hold the mayor to account if Johnson was re-elected or if Ken uh, gets elected uh, on their own. Uh, we don't think that the GLA is a particularly useful political institution. Uh, it lacks the real power to make uh, political power in London in the hands of the mayor accountable to the people of London. Nevertheless, it's an important platform and one that we believe could be very useful in what we see as being the key tasks uh, necessary uh, to give Londoners uh, some of the uh, voice that they so badly need. Uh, we're not standing candidates in any of the constituency elections. There are 14 constituency seats across the uh, Greater London Assembly. And that's because some of the constituent organisations in the Trade Union Socialist Coalition, uh, such as my own union and the Fire Brigades Union London Region, have got clear policy where we're trying to get rid of particular Tory uh, members of the GLA, in particular Brian Coleman, uh, the uh, GLA member for Camden and Barnet, who is head of the Fire Committee, uh, and who is a right royal pain in the arse. And, you know, we, we're encouraging our members, we're writing to our members who live in the postcodes covered by Camden and Barnet, encouraging them to vote for Andrew Dismore, uh, the Labour candidate in that seat, because we believe he's got the best chance of getting rid of Coleman. However, we are standing candidates, uh, we're standing 17 candidates, uh, because you can stand as, as, almost as many as uh, you, you want, for the 11 top-up seats in London. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because none of the political parties uh, that are engaged in this election offer the policies that Londoners need. If you examine the manifestos of all of the main parties, uh, and I'm talking here about the in particular the Lib Dems, the uh, Tories and the Labour parties. Although there's a lot of quibbling about car park charges, about, set, about whether, or not to freeze com uh, whether or not to freeze community charges, there's a uh, council tax, there's, there's lots of quibbling around the edges. They are all agreed, all agreed on the fundamental response that local government should have when faced with a crisis of austerity cuts being implemented from central government. And they all agreed that the only thing that local government can do and regional government can do is to carry out the cuts that they're tasked to carry out uh, by George, George Osborne uh, and by uh, central government. Now, we believe that there's a need to stand up and say that there's a need for a mass movement to be created in this city and in other cities throughout Britain, which takes a principled stance against cuts. Econom I mean, I don't need to, in the couple of minutes I've got left, 
make the economic arguments that the people in this room are perfectly well aware of for why the austerity agenda is economically balmy, why Osborne is talking out of his ass when he talks about uh, the, the public sector economy crowding out the private sector. All of this nonsense is being revealed day after day as we go further and further into the double-dip recession which the trade unions have long predicted these policies would lead to. But what's missing in all this is any attempt at a local government level, uh, at a municipal government level, to harness the energies, the resources and the powers of the people of this society, of this city, to fight back against the principle of cuts being the only story in town. And the reason Tusk is standing candidates is because it's quite possible with 5% of the vote in London to get a candidate elected with an elected candidate on the GLA. That candidate, which would be me because I'm the lead candidate for Tusk in London, would be a focal point for creating a mass movement which will march against cuts, which will demonstrate against cuts, which will support workers who work for local government, who are faced with the closure of their services, who will support communities when they decide to take direct action by occupying local libraries, local schools, whatever else it might be that's under threat from cuts. The overwhelming question in this election is the question of the need for an alternative to austerity. And Tusk is united around the need to pose a powerful political voice against austerity. We wish that there were more, uh, that, that we had more forces as part of the Trade Union Socialist Coalition. We would like to have more trade unions willing to join in, to, to stand candidates. We have no intention anywhere in the country of standing candidates for sectarian reasons against good left Labour uh, councillors, for example, who've stood and shown that they have a platform of opposing cuts in the local council. But the sad story is, and everyone in this room probably knows this already, that up and down the country, Labour councillors have bent over and done exactly as they were asked to by, by central government when it came to implementing cuts, with the sole solitary exception of one uh, Labour councillor in, uh, in Barking, who's now been expelled or resigned, I think, from the Labour group, and one Labour councillor uh, in Lambeth, who likewise has been suspended uh, from the Labour group for refusing to vote uh, for a cuts and austerity package in Lambeth. So it's quite clear that the lead in the anti-cuts agenda isn't coming from local Labour councillors in the way that it did in the 1980s. And what we need to do is somehow to motivate a fight back against this cuts agenda. By standing in this election in London, that's what we hope to do. Uh, I'm, I haven't spent my... Uh, seven or eight minutes having a pop at the Green Party, you know, for, for your amusement. But, I mean, I would say the, the reason why I don't favour supporting Green candidates is that where we have seen Green candidates uh, be elected, uh, for example, in Brighton, they have gone along with the cuts agenda when that has been, uh, when they've had the responsibility for deciding what to do with power in practice. Where we've seen Green governments or Green coalition governments in Ireland, in Germany, in other European countries, they have proved to be ultra neoliberal governments which have gone about along with the Lisbon agenda in Ireland uh, as part of the FINA Foil coalition and have gone along with neoliberal attacks on public sector workers jobs uh, in, in Germany as part of their, the regional government coalitions that they've been part of. So for that reason, uh, without wanting to divert a lot of time into having a pop at the Greens, that's why I don't see the Green Party as offering a genuine alternative to the cuts agenda. We think there is a possibility to get 100,000 votes in London. There's a crying hunger uh, for an alternative to cuts. Uh, and we think that this time around, it might be possible that we can crack it. Whether or not we do, uh, we'll see in the coming uh, five, six, seven days. Uh, but thank you very much for listening. And I hope we can have a good uh, debate about it uh, over the next hour.